Good morning. Today we're in 2 Samuel 16, 17, and 18. And when David was a little past the top of the hill, behold, Ziba, the servant of Methibosheth, met with him. And a couple of asses saddled, and a couple, of, and upon them two hundred loaves of bread, and a hundred bunches of raisins, and a hundred summer fruits, and a bottle of wine. And the king said unto Ziba, What meanest thou by these? And Ziba said, The asses be for the king's household to ride on, the bread and summer fruit for the young men to eat, and the wine that such be faint in the wilderness may drink. And the king said, And where is thy master's son? And Ziba said unto the king, Behold, he abideth at Jerusalem, for he said, Today shall the house of Israel restore me the kingdom of my father. Then said the king to Ziba, Behold, thine are all that pertain unto Mehobethus. And Ziba said, I humbly beseech thee that I may find grace in thy sight, my lord, O king. And when king David came to Behurim, behold, thence came out a man of the family of the house of Saul, whose name was Shemaiah, the son of Gera. And he came forth and cursed still as he came. And he cast stones at David and all the servants of king David. And all the people and all the mighty men were on his right hand and on his left. And thus said Shemaiah, when he cursed, Come out, come out, thou bloody man, and thou man of Belial. The Lord hath returned upon thee all the blood of the house of Saul, in whose stead thou hast reigned. And the Lord hath delivered the kingdom into the hand of Absalom thy son. And behold, thou art taken in thy mischief, because thou art a bloody man. And said Abasha, the son of Zariah, unto the king, Why should this dead dog curse my lord the king? Let me go over, I pray thee, and take off his head. And the king said, What have I to do with you, ye sons of Zeruah? Let him curse, because the Lord had said unto him, Curse David. Who shall then say, Wherefore thou shalt done so? And David said to Abishah, to all his servants, Behold, my son, which came forth of my bowels, seeketh my life. How much more now may this Benjamite do to it? Let him alone, let him curse, for the Lord hath bidden him. It may be that the Lord will look on mine affliction, that the Lord will requite me this day for his cursing this day. And as David and his men went by the way, Shemaiah went along the hillside over against him and cursed as he went and threw stones at him and cast dust. And the king and all the people that were with him came weary and refreshed themselves there. And Absalom and all the people of the men of Israel came to Jerusalem and Ahithophel come with him, and it came to pass when Hushiah the archite, David's friend, was come to Absalom, that Hushiah said unto Absalom, God save the king, God save the king. And Absalom said to Hushiah, Is this the kindness to thy friend? Why wentest thou not with thy friend? And Hushiah said to Absalom, Nay, but whom the Lord and this people and all the men of Israel choose, his will I be, and with him will I abide. And again, whom should, whom should I serve? Should I not serve in the presence of his son as I have served in the pre father's presence? So will I be in thy presence. Then said Absalom to Ahithiel, Give counsel among you what we shall do. And Ahithiel said unto Absalom, Go in unto thy father's concubines, which he hath left to keep the house. And all Israel shall hear that thou art abhorred of thy father. Then shall the hands of all that are with thee be strong. So they spread Absalom a tent upon the top of the house, and Absalom went in unto his father's concubines in the sight of all Israel. And the counsel of Ahithiel, which he counseled in those days, was if man had inquired of the oracle of God, so that all the counsel of Ahithiel, both with David and with Absalom. Chapter 17, Moreover, Ahithiel said unto Absalom, Let me now choose out twelve thousand men, and I will arise and pursue after David this night. And I will come upon him while he is weary and weak-handed, and will make him afraid, and all the people that are with him shall flee, and I will smite the king only. And I will bring back all the people unto thee. The man whom thou seekest is of all the return, and all the people shall be in peace. And the same pleased Absalom well and the elders of Israel. Then Absalom said, Can call now Hushiah the archite also, and let us hear likewise what he said. And when Hushiah was come to Absalom, Absalom spake unto him, saying, Ahithiel had spoken after this manner. Shall we do after his saying? If not, speak thou. And Hushiah said unto Absalom, The counsel that Ahithiel hath given is not good at this time. For said Hushiah, Thou knowest thy father and his men, if they be mighty men, they be chafed in their mind, and they bear robed of her whelps in the field. Thy father is a man of war, and will not lodge with the people. 
Behold, he is hid now in some pit or in some other place, and it will come to pass when some of them be overthrown at first, that whosoever heareth it will say there is a slaughter among the people that follow Absalom. And he also that is valiant, whose heart is the heart of a lion, shall utter melt, for all Israel knoweth that thy father is a mighty man, and they which be with him are valiant men. Therefore I counsel that all Israel be generally gathered unto thee, from Dan even to Beersheba, as a sand that is by the sea for the multitude, and that thou go to battle in thine own person. So shall we come upon him in some place where he shall be found, and we will light upon him as the dew falleth upon the ground. And of him and all the men that are with him there shall not be left so much as one. Moreover, if he be gotten into a city, then all shall Israel bring ropes to that city, and we will draw it into the river, until there be not one small stone found there. And Absalom and all the men of Israel said, The counsel of Hushai the Archite is better than the counsel of Ahithiel. For the Lord hath appointed to defeat the good counsel of Ahithiel to the intent that the Lord might bring evil upon Absalom. Then said Hushai unto Zadok and to Abithiar the priest, Thus and thus did Ahithiel counsel Absalom and the elders of Israel. And thus and thus have I counseled. Now therefore send quickly and tell David, saying, Lodge not this night in the plains of the wilderness, but speedily pass over, lest the king be swallowed up, and all the people that are with him. Now Jonathan and Nehemias stayed in Gerogel, for they might not seem to be seen to come to, to the city. And a wench went with them, and told them, and they went and told the king David. Nevertheless a lad saw them, and told Absalom, but they went both of them away quickly, and came to a man's house in Behurim, which had a well in his court whither they went down. And the woman took and spread a covering over the well's mouth, and spread ground corn thereon, and the thing was not known. And when Absalom's serv servants came to the woman to the house, they said, Where is Ahimeaz and Jonathan? And the woman said unto them, They be gone over the brook of water. And when they had sought and could not find them, they returned to Jerusalem. And it came to pass, after they were departed, that they came up out of the well, and went and told King David, and said unto David, Arise, quickly pass over the water, for thus had a fithiel counseled against you. And then David arose, and all the people that were with him, and they passed over Jordan. By the morning light there lacked not one of them that was not gone over Jordan. And when a fithiel saw that his counsel was not followed, he saddled his ass and arose, and got him to his house, to his city, he put his household in order and hanged himself and died and was buried in the sepulchre of his father. Then David came to Mahanaim, and Absalom passed over Jordan, he and all the men of Israel with him. And Absalom made Amasa captain of the host instead of Joab, which Amasa was a man's son, whose name was Ithria, the Israelite, and went to Abigail, the daughter of Nahash, sister of Zeriah, Joab's mother. So Israel and Absalom pitched in the land of Gilead. And it came to pass when David was come to Mahanaim that Shobi the son of Nashus of Rabbah the children of Ammon and Machir the son of Emil and Lodabar and Barzillia the Gilead of Rogelim brought beds and basins and earthen vessels and wheat and barley and flour and parched corn and beans and lentils and parched pulse and honey and butter and sheep and cheese of kind for David and for the people that were with him to eat for they said the people is hungry and weary and thirsty in the wilderness. And David numbered the people that were with him, and set captains of thousands and captains of hundreds over them, in chapter 18. And David sent forth a third part of the people under the hand of Joab, and a third part under the hand of Abishai, the son of Zeriah, Joab's brother, and a third part under the hand of Ittiah, the Giptite. And the king said unto the people, I will surely go forth with you myself also. But the people answered, Thou shalt not go forth. For if we flee away, they will not care for us. Neither if half of us die, they will not care for us. But now there are ten thousand of us, and now is better than to secure us out of the city. And the king said unto them, What seemeth you best I will do? And the king stood by the gate, and the people came out by hundreds and by thousands. And the king commanded Joab and Abishai and Ittai, saying, Deal gently for my sake with the young men, even with Absalom. And all the people heard when the king gave all the captains charge concerning Absalom. So the people went out into the field against Israel, and the battle was in the wood of Ephraim, 
where the people of Israel were slain before the servants of David, and there was a great slaughter that day of 20,000 men. For the battle was there scattered over the face of all the country, and the wood devoured more people that day than the sword devoured. And Absalom met the servants of David, and Absalom rode upon a mule, and the mule went under the thick boughs of a great oak, and his head caught hold of the oak, and he was taken up between the heaven and the earth, and the mule that was under him went away. And a certain man saw it and told Jacob and said, Behold, I saw Absalom hanged in an oak. And Joab said unto the man that told him, Behold, thou sawest him, and thou didst not smite him there to the ground. And I would have given thee ten shekels of silver and a girdle. And the man said unto Joab, Though I should receive a thousand shekels of silver in my hand, yet would I not put forth my hand against the king's son. For in our hearing the king charged thee, and Abishai the Ittia, saying, Behold, or beware, that not one touched the young man Absalom. Otherwise I should have wrought falsehood against my own life, for there is no matter hid from the king, and thou thyself wouldest have set thyself against me. Then said Joab, I may not tarry thus with thee. And he took three darts in his hand, and thrust them to the heart of Absalom, while he was yet alive in the midst of the oak. And ten young men that bear Joab's armor come passed about and smote Absalom and slew him. And Joab blew the trumpet, and the people returned from pursuing after Israel, for Joab held back the people. And they took Absalom and cast him into a great pit in the wood, and laid a very heap of stones upon him. And they, Israel fled every one to his tent. Now Absalom in his lifetime had taken and reared up for himself a pillar which is in the king's dale. For he said, I have no son to keep my name in remembrance. And he called the pillar after his own name, and it is called unto this day Absalom's place. Then said Ahimeaz, the son of Zadok, Let me now run and bear the king's tidings, that the Lord hath avenged him of his enemies. And Joab said unto him, Thou shalt not bear tidings this day, but thou shalt bear tidings another day. But this day thou shalt bear no tidings, because the king's son is dead. Then said Joab to Cushi, Go tell the king what thou hast seen. And Cushi bowed himself unto Joab and ran. Then said Ahimeaz, the son of Zadok, yet again to Joab, But howsoever let me, I pray thee, also run after Cushi. And Joab said, Wherefore wilt thou run, my son, that thou seeing thou hast no tidings ready? But however so, said he, Let me run. And he said unto him, Run. Then Ahimeaz ran by the way of the plain, and overran Cushi. And David sat between the two gates, and the watchman went up to the roof over the gate and to the wall, and lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, a man running alone. And the watchman cried and told the king, and the king said, If he be alone, there is tidings in his mouth. And he came a spade and drew near. And the watchman saw another man running, and the watchman called to the porter and said, Behold, another man running along. And the king said, He also bringeth tidings. And the watchman said, Methinketh the running of the foremost is like the running of Ahimaaz, the son of Zadok. And the king said, He is a good man, and cometh with good tidings. And Ahimaaz called and said unto the king, All is well. And he fell down to the earth upon his face before the king, and said, Blessed be the Lord thy God, which hath delivered up the men that lifted up their hand against my lord the king. And the king said, Is the young man Absalom safe? And Ahimaaz answered, When Joab sent the king's servant, and me and thy servant, I saw a great multitude, but I knew not what it was. And the king said to him, Turn aside and stand here. And he turned aside and stood still. And behold, Cushi came, and Cushi said, Tidings, my lord the king, for the Lord hath avenged thee this day of them that rose up against thee. And the king said unto Cushi, Is a young man Absalom safe? And Cushi answered, The enemies of my lord the king, and all that rise against thee to do thee hurt, be as the young man is. And the king was much moved, and he went up to the chamber over the gate and wept. As he went, thus he said, O oh, my son Absalom, my son, my son Absalom, would God I had died for thee, O Absalom, my son, my son.